Most of the time I have three kids, and in most situations, if you water and feed them, they continue to grow and grow and grow. And along the way, you give your kids many talks, right? A little talk. And we talk about drugs, and we talk about alcohol, and birds and the bees, and all those types of things. But one talk we often don't have is the bone health talk, the osteoporosis talk to teenagers. What? Hey everyone, welcome to the Front Row. My name is Ed Debu, a physical therapist out of Bellingham, Washington. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. Hope you find it uh, knowledgeable and interesting. So today we're going to talk about bone health and why it's important that we have another talk with our kids. I know, right? Parents, I'm sorry, but it's critical, especially if you have young daughters. I have a daughter, Hope, who is 15 years old, and <laughs> she gets the brunt of a lot of my lectures, trust me. But one of the things I do stress to her the, is the importance of bone health density. So osteoporosis is considered a, a pediatric disease that manifests itself in geriatrics. Teenagers need to build up reserves in their bone bank so that when they get older, just like anything else, they can draw from that, but they can only build their bone mass density up to about age 20, 25. That's when we reach our peak bone mass density. So it's critical, especially when we're in those early puberty and adolescent phase, that we work hard on building as much bone in the bank as we can because then we're gonna draw off of that for the rest of our lives. 80% of the 10 million Americans that suffer from osteoporosis are female. So most of us know that females will, will have osteoporosis or a chance of osteoporosis a lot more than men, but why? A couple different reasons why. Number one, women just start off with less density in their bones. They tend to have smaller bones that aren't as dense as men. So they're actually starting with less money in the bank or in the bone bank. Second thing, of course is hormonal changes. So when females hit menopause, there's a decrease in estrogen and progesterone, both of which are responsible for helping to keep your bones strong and healthy. So as you reduce the amount of hormones, especially estrogen in the body, that also contributes to bone loss. Women lose about 30% of their bone mass during those first few years of menopause. So if you happen to be watching this and you're a female who is just maybe perimenopausal or just entered menopause and you're not lifting weights or you're not doing high intensity weight bearing activities, it is critical because you are now entering this phase where you're about to lose 30% of your bone mass. So once again, parents, sorry, but it's on us to lead by example and really to take charge of our kids' bone health. So as parents, what do we need to do? First of all, we need to lead by example. So they need to see you eating well, exercising, watching tobacco, alcohol use, all those things that affect bone health. So first, lead by example, parents. The next thing we have to do is encourage a healthy body image and healthy body weight. If our kids are underweight or overweight, both can affect bone density and need to be addressed. Make sure they are getting enough calcium and vitamin D. Maybe talk to your doctor to find out what their vitamin D levels are. Calcium intake recommendations for kids 9 to 18 are about 1,300 milligrams a day and 200 micrograms of vitamin D. But talk to your doctor about that. We need to get our kids out there, if we can, daily high intensity exercises, high impact kind of work, jumping, running, weight training, those are all great things to help build bone density and put some money in the bone bank. And the last thing kind of ties into all the other talks that we have with them. Really avoid excessive alcohol. Hopefully they're not smoking. Limit carbonated drinks because if they're having a lot of cola, chances are they're not having a glass of milk. So it's not so much that the carbonated cola is a bad thing, although that can affect calcium absorption rate but it's more so just trying to promote a healthy diet. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and ding, turning on your notifications so that you never miss another video. Elizabeth and I are currently working on another project, Live Well 50, that's designed to help people 50 and older just like us, Elizabeth and I are both 52, to age as well and successfully and as strong as we can. So if that's something that sounds appealing to you, We'll put a link down below to the landing page for Live Well 50. Go ahead and put your email address on there. And as we get closer to launch, we'll send out information. We'll send out what the website's all about. And hopefully you can join us and be part of our community. We'll age well together. All right. Thank you very much. Take care.